Appreciate it. John Meacham, I want you to stick around. I want to bring in now a man with a unique perspective on all of this. John Dean, the former Nixon uh, White House counsel. Also, um, uh, uh, John Meacham is going to stay with us, historian as well. Uh, uh, welcome to the panel, John Dean. What do you, what's your reaction to the breaking news tonight? Well, it certainly is not Saturday Night Massacre 2. Uh, it doesn't quite rise to that level. It is clearly botched as well. The White House did not handle it well. Uh, they have acted in a way that raises the suspicions that you're hearing on your panel. Uh, they are widespread. I'm hearing them on the radio, and some people are confused about history and think this was a, another Saturday Night Live. It was or Saturday Night Massacre. It was not. Uh, that was a unique situation where uh, the prosecutor, the special prosecutor, was doing exactly what the president had instructed him he did not want done. He, they were each testing the other, and the prosecutor lost, and uh, the, what, they shut down the special prosecution office. That was the massacre. Yeah. John, since you mentioned that, I want to put this, this is from the Nixon Library tonight. They tweeted this. They said, fun fact, President Nixon never fired the director of the FBI. But he did fire the special prosecutor and the attorney general and the deputy attorney general resigned. Will there be any further fallout uh, from this as well as Kevin Madden says? That's a great question. And I think that one of the things we have to figure out is to what extent, what was the impetus for the events that led to today? Uh, there, there is the, the memo from the deputy attorney general. Uh, there have been questions raised about uh, when did that start? Uh, did someone in the White House ask for a pretext to get rid of Director Comey? If they did that, uh, why did they do it in May and not in January uh, or at any point uh, going, going back? And just a, a, a general point is, there's going to be a lot of talk, and there already is, and the president just tweeted about this apparently, about hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is interesting, but it's not dispositive in this case. The rule of law is dispositive, and there are very reasonable people asking very reasonable questions about whether the president of the United States has something to hide in terms of the camp his campaign and potential collusion with Russia. He has dismissed that. He has called it a ruse. He's called it fake news. And what he's used to is when he makes a declaration like that, we're all like fourth graders at a soccer game. We chase the ball to the other side of the field. Mm -hmm. I, I think we have to do everything we can at this point to stay in position. I asked, uh, John Dean, I asked Chris Ruddy, who is a friend of the president, if the president and this administration feel, if they feel that they are above the law. He said no. What do you say? Well, I, you know, I don't think they are deliberately trying to flout the law here. Uh, there's always been a question to me with this president of a lack of experience and not really understanding the job and not bringing in people who do understand how the White House works. This could have all been avoided, Don. They certainly uh, all had to, all they had to do is look at history uh, and see how easy it would be to replay what they're getting tonight. So I think there's two things might be going on. One is a possible sinister motive, but we don't know that. We don't have those facts. The other is incompetence, which is, if there is not a sinister motive, is, is the other alternative. Yeah. John, what's, are you troubled by this? Very much Am so. Oh, sorry. John Meacham. Uh, very much so. I, I think that it's, uh, I think they, they wanted a result and they found a pretext for it. And I think that uh, we have a real question going forward about the separation of powers and the rule of law. And I, I haven't been someone who's, you know, thrown myself in with the authoritarian narratives about, about President Trump, but this is not a, uh, a step in the right direction. John Dean, I want to ask you, because there's a serious question that was uh, quickly here. Evan Osnos from a staff writer for The New Yorker said, a serious question, where are Comey's files right now? Who controls them? After Nixon fired, special prosecutor office was sealed. Important. That is important. It is indeed. Uh, what would happen in a circumstance like this is very much unlike what happened with the special prosecutor when he was shutting that office down, where they literally sent the FBI over to uh, do it. So... Uh, my phone, unfortunately, was ringing there. I didn't. It's okay. It go off. on. And anyway, uh, the files I'm sure are secured. They're in his office. I, you know, I don't know uh, any reason why he wouldn't be given access back to his office uh, to go in and get his personal papers and personal belongings. Mm -hmm. This was somewhat ham-fisted the way it was handled. Uh, it's unfortunate that he was out here in. 
a recruiting speech yeah. and was not given any foreign warning as to what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that, that's why it, it, it's kind of mysterious why they did it this way uh, when it was bound to create a, a reaction that uh, is happening. John Dean, John Meacham, thank you so much. Thank you. Our live coverage of today's big news continues right now with my colleague Jake Tapper in Washington. Jake?